good evening, everybody. Um, I know probably most of you are a bit tired, so we're going to try to make it as fun and as interesting as possible. We are? Um, yeah, we are. Um, so, yes, as uh, Jeremy just introduced us, and we also want to thank you to Boris and uh, the conference for inviting us and to talk about the work we actually do. So, we're from Flaneur magazine, Fragments of a Street, and um, let's start maybe with a more personal uh, intro. So this is us um, last last year in September during our production time in Rome, the issue that just launched uh, this week. And um, yeah, um, so on the left with the baseball cap, this is Fabian, one of the editors. Um, next to him is Michelle, this which is I'm me. Hello. very <laughs> happy to share the stage uh, tonight. Uh, she's one of the art directors and graphic designers for Flandre Magazine from Studio Kiko from Berlin. Um, then in the back, smiling and being very happy, uh, are Graschina and uh, Johannes Graschina and Johannes are also here uh, in, the <laughs> in the first rows. And uh, Graschina is one of the other editors in chief, and Johanna, uh, Johannes is the better half of Studio Kiko. And half. Uh, I, don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> and, but yeah, he's also taking care of the art direction um, for Flaneur. And then, yeah, a dear friend who joined us during uh, our work time. Um, so let's talk about what Flaneur is. Very briefly, it's one street per issue in, in a different city. And um, what we'd like to do today um, to give you a better insight of the work we do and the philosophy when it comes to publishing, the editorial part and the design part, because there's uh, a bit more to tell than just, yeah, to say one singular street per issue. Um, some hard facts for you. Um, is this really working? Yeah? I, can, I can hear okay, you. Can you hear yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, So let's, yeah, let's go back almost two years. We're going to turn two years uh, in the summertime. It all started in June 2013 with the first issue that you can see here, uh, Kantstraße in Berlin. I don't know. Maybe some of you know it. Um, to test out the concept and the idea without having too much of a financial risk, um, we decided to go to Leipzig with the second issue that we launched in December 2013 and ended up on georg Schwarzstraße. Um, and that was actually followed by uh, a big move. Uh, we crossed the ocean and ended up in the very cold uh, wintertime in Montreal, and launched the Rue Bernard issue last year, summer time. And just as Jeremy said, and I already showed you, the actual current issue, um, yeah, Rome, Rome is out since last week. We had a beautiful launch in Berlin on Tuesday evening. And um, yeah, excited to be here with a with new issue. So I don't know who has been uh, yesterday to 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 the talks, but there was one um, of Mike Kuringer from Maison Moderne from Luxembourg. Um, he talked about CityMax, and it uh, was very nice um, from him to also mention us and include us in this category, and he put us in the category of um, personal projects, and uh, that, is, that is very true. So I'm the, I'm the founder and publisher um, of the project, and I can say that this was not founded by, you know, or with a business plan. The business plan came a long time later. Um, so, you know, I don't know who's familiar with the th term flaneur, but flaneur in, in the theorem, I'm not going to dive in too, too deeply, but it actually is a person who walks or strolls around aimlessly. And, um, yeah, I can say that I definitely did do the same. Um, when I when I came up with the idea, because I never had um, the idea to end up as a publisher, um, which is still um, yeah sometimes a bit crazy to me how that happened. But the personal story behind this is I was born and raised in Berlin, and um, I graduated there, and I felt very uninspired. And even though Berlin has been one of those cities in the recent years where everybody comes to because it's so inspiring. Um, I needed to leave, uh, which I did. I, I went to New York, stayed there for a while, eventually returned uh, pretty fast back to Berlin um, when plans didn't work out. And um, I had to live for a while with my parents again. And what I actually did do a lot was just to look outside of the window because they also live in a very quiet neighborhood in Berlin. 
Um, and what I realized is that there's so much life and stories happening on one street. Sometimes you can hear the neighbors fight. Sometimes you, ca you can hear them laugh. And um, I was just interested in maybe embracing a street as the greatest storyteller that we actually have in front of our house, in front of our windows. So um, that was, a yeah, the, the brief idea. And then I was very lucky to meet the team that I just presented you in January 2013. Um, they were on board right away. We sat down. The editors came up with a more concrete approach. The designers were very interested to also you know, I think be part of something. We, we didn't need much convincing. I mean, yeah. when, you, when you said, hey, we're gonna, let's make a magazine about one street, I think we were sort yeah. of like, so yeah, let's That's let's how it started. It. And uh, five months later, we, we launched the first issue. And um, that is um, kind of the personal story behind Flaneur magazine. Um, and what I would like to talk now is um, what was very important and is one of the most important in Flaneur signatures of today is that when it comes to the contributors or to the people that we want to invite to produce the issue with, uh, we don't want to install any hierarchy. Um, what I mean by this is that it doesn't matter um, who we work with. So we're interested in, in the stories that people from diverse backgrounds tell us. So it can be an illustrator, it can be the barber we meet on the street, it can be an academic writer, and so on and so on. And here is a, is a slide that shows you different um, pages from the past issues. For example, on the top left is a choreographer from Montreal. So that's the third issue. And he interpreted his associations with the street in dance postures. Uh, next to it, you can see in the, in the last issue an academic writing. Um, then there is a musician piece. And uh, on, the, on the bottom right, you see actually 3D architecture renderings that were illustrating um, a writing piece. And what I would like to stress is with this that most of the things that we then print are not primarily made for print. So we're also interested in the times, you know, where print is facing a lot of challenges to take this as an advantage and to rethink also print as a medium. And um, this is another example. So this is the also part of the Rome issue. And we teamed up with two Rome filmmakers Matteo and Alessio, and um, they came up with a fictional parrot story um, that's happening on our street. But what I what I want to tell you with this is that it's it's a short film that we then print um, over six pages, the film stills. And just two hours ago, the movie's actually really uploaded on our website, so um, you can have a look at it if you want to. And um, oh yeah, okay. So so one last thing before uh, Michelle carries on. Um, I mean, this, this all might sound fun and radical, and it is. It's a, it's a lot of fun to work. Uh, I, hope, I hope for the others, too. Um, but it comes, of course, with challenges. And the challenge is, how do you, and especially as a publisher, you know, you kind of are the person to bring in structure, to bring in rhythm, so it doesn't really feel like you're always starting from scratch. But I think that it always needs to be in a bit like this for Flaneur because um, that's, that it's, yeah, that's our signature and that's what we do. And uh, maybe Michelle wants to give an insight of how it feels to design under this kind of philosophy. Yeah, uh, I'm not just here to look pretty. I'm actually going to do some talking. Um, okay, so what do we actually do as Flaneurs? And by Flaneurs, I'm talking quite broadly. I'm talking about Ricarda, our publisher. I'm talking about our editors, Christina and Fabian us, the designers, also um, all of our contributors and, of course, our readers. Um, so we go to a street and uh, we talk to a lot of people, a lot of locals. Uh, we talk to nice people. Um, we talk to some occasionally scary-looking people. And we talk to people who uh, look like they come straight out of Wes Anderson movies. Um, we also talk to shopkeepers, old people, uh, young people. Um, as Ricky mentioned, that. Uh, um, there's sort of no hierarchy between our contributors or what kind of contributions we have equally. Um, we feel like everyone has a story to tell, everyone that we meet. Um, we also look at a street's history. Um, we look at its architecture, its social structure. We explore its dark corners. Uh, this was um, a photography series by um, Absalom and Bardsley for issue two. And uh, they were sort of interested in imagining where the 
the group of anti-fascist youths called the Moiten might have hung out during the Nazi time on the Georg, Sch on the Georg Schwarzstrasse. Um, accompanying these photos were actually sort of real first-hand accounts uh, from the original Moiten, so we're often mixing real and fiction uh, to create new pieces. Um, so as Flaneurs, we look very closely at the pavement, and sometimes we look up at the sky. Um, it's really important for such a site-specific project that we all go and actually see and experience the street for ourselves. So the editors are actually living there for seven weeks. Um, Johannes and I go and join them for sort of anywhere between three days and two weeks, um, and we gather a lot of visual, um, a lot of visual research. So we look at the beautiful things, we look at the really ugly things, and sometimes it inspires us to make uh, things that look like this. Um, we're okay with experimenting. We don't mind making unbeautiful designs sometimes. Uh, we realize the street is a very dirty place, um, unless, of course, you're in Munich. But uh, um, we do actually also exercise a little bit of design restraint sometimes. Uh, we have a kind of loose house style, which we employ for more uh, straightforward literary pieces. Um, we also look for sort of clues and links, and we try and make connections and cross-references. Cross Obviously, the street is, is kind of a... Um, you know, it's not a very large area that we're exploring, and a lot of our contributors um, end up sort of talking about similar themes, or maybe there's, I don't know, someone appears in one story and then again in another story, and we really enjoy to uh, point a reader maybe uh, sort of um, from one piece to the next. And uh, so the, uh, the thing on the left, the small image, that's like a cross-reference, basically. And we really like the... Um, our readers might not have to read from sort of start to finish, but they might uh, find their own way of dipping in and out of it or uh, make their own links. Um, we can also be quite fantasyful. Uh, this is the sort of flaneur, uh, I guess, is this kind of flaneur doing what, the lifestyle section of a magazine? So our editors will do a kind of straightforward um, interview. They'll go and visit someone at their home on the street and then um, either we or uh, someone else will receive a, just a description of their home and without ever having seen it, um, we get to illustrate it or interpret it. Um, so all in all, I guess we try and generate a discussion about the street and its inhabitants and, and its role within the city. So I want to talk a little bit about how we work with our editors and how we work with our contributors to sort of unfold and unravel these stories. Um, uh, I'm going to start with the Rome issue. So this is our latest issue. We're very excited about it. Uh, <laughs> whoop. The, first, uh, the first part of is this issue is called the Questiana Romana. That means the question of Rome. And the editors decided this time to hold um, a panel discussion between 11 people representing 11 positions. And they posed the question to these 11 people, um, how should a modern Italian city be shaped? So MMXV are the Roman numerals for 2015. Um, the reason being is that the same debate was actually held once before um, at the end of the 19th century. And part of the answer was an urban plan, including the construction of the Corso Vittorio Manuela Secunda, which, is, which was our street that we had chosen. So the building of this street was actually supposed to help the infrastructure of the city, but um, it kind of became a bit of a wound for the locals as it, it sort of ran or drove straight through the historical center. And uh, it became kind of sort of detached and at odds with the people. And it's the kind of street that no one wants to spend much time on, uh, but everyone needs to use it to get sort of from A to B. Um, so this, uh, this was actually a bit of a challenge for us because the editors don't like to make things simple. And uh, they decided not to sort of run the answers in parallel or in a linear, linear format, because we, we just never do that. Um, so we were faced with the challenge of sort of trying to run answers parallel or trying to integrate answers. And we just had to create a very sort of uh, very structured document, which we also don't often do. Um, not only that, not, uh, but the result of the Christiana Romana sort of uh, wasn't, just, wasn't just verbal and in writing. Um, but it manifested itself as well, sort of um, in illustration, um, in photography. This is actually Rome in New York. Uh, in collections of images, uh, sort of found images, and also in an intervention. So the performance artist uh, stalker group 
decided that the ruins at the beginning of the street, uh, I think they're called the Lago di Torre Argentina, which are normally cordoned off to the public, should be a lake for the public. So uh, they made an intervention over one day and they kind of rallied all the locals up to uh, literally try and fill it with water. Um, so this 34-page discussion is really a sort of a great example of Flaneur doing Flaneur, kind of a, um, using the street as a starting point to ask sort of bigger questions or to, as a springboard for, uh, um, for broader work. Um, it's also incorporating, again, many different mediums, many different people coming together. It's also the first time that we've ever done it sort of this in depth. So um, it's nice that we feel, we feel like we evolved the magazine a little bit with every issue. Um, okay, so one of our favorite parts is um, our directors and designers is uh, we get to commission works. Um, we don't actually sort of do it in the traditional sense. We don't sit around and think up stories and then try and brief someone to go and cover it. Uh, we're more interested in working with people who uh, will bring their own, their own kind of voice to the magazine. So we tend to look at people's work and look at their working process and try and see who will fit and who will create something interesting. Um, this contributor, Carlo Gabriello, Gabriella Tribioli, Gabriello Tribioli, um, he took a very conceptual approach and he decided to catch a fish for Flaneur. So we were really interested in Carlo's sort of approach to his work. Uh, his thought process usually leads him to sort of long performative works where he will meticulously document and archive um, what he's doing. So for, for Flaneur, he went every single day to the River Tiber, which was at the other end of the street and using sort of rudimentary fishing equipment, he tried to catch a fish. And I think he returned for uh, eight days until he finally did, did succeed. Um, and the idea behind this was that by, by catching a prey, he sort of creates um, a moment and a coordinate. So it, by doing this, he defines a time and a place and an instant. And um, so inspired by his working method, uh, we chose to sort of unfold this process by literally unfolding this process Here's a really beautiful unfolding demonstration. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so we wanted to also draw this kind of, this idea of this uh, linear visual timeline and made a concertina format out of it. Um, so in the same way that our contributors are often challenging what can be kind of an editorial story, uh, we're working with them really closely all the time to also kind of test the format of print as well. Um, in issue three, one of our contributors took a, a road trip from Mexico to Rubina in Montreal, and along the way he kind of wrote his piece on scraps of paper, on cigarette packets, on, I don't know, whatever, whatever he could find. And then he stuffed it all in an envelope and left it at our local news, news agent. And uh, so this is how we received it. And uh, we really liked this experience of sort of discovering it and piecing it together. And we wanted to recreate that for our readers. So uh, hence, did you, did you demonstrate already? Oh, I'm sure you did a great job. Did she do a great job? She did, didn't she? Yeah, good. Um, yeah, similarly in issue two, we had, a, we had another sort of half fictive, half, half real um, uh, work. Uh, so this was, a, this was um, about town, town planning in Leipzig at the turn of the century. And uh, the writer sort of, um, I don't know, he came up with this uh, very strange scenario where there was supposed to be a found document and someone else was supposed to have found it and kind of scribbled all over it and someone else was supposed to have found it and footnoted it. And um, we kind of like this found document aesthetic, so we decided to sort of paginate it all wrong and uh, kind of fold it backwards and like jam it into the magazine as if it's this kind of like lost thing which you can discover. And uh, to do this, we, we chose, uh, uh, I think you call it a French fold in English, and then in German you call it a Japan bin. Again, Japan what beautiful, Japanish bin on. And inside we sort of hid an extension of, um, uh, extension of another piece which was sort of uh, sonatas created for a burnt out plastic flower store. Um, and we, we really enjoy doing this. We really enjoy kind of uh, trying to bring other layers and levels into the magazine, sort of try and create this experience of discovery or uh, in the same way a street works. It has, it's not, I don't know, it's not, a, it's, it's not such a simple thing. You know? <laughs> so admittedly, 
I think working like this, we're all going to agree here, working like this is a very slow process. Uh, we have to take time with every single artist, with every single contributor, to sort of find an interesting and thought-provoking way to unfold theirs and our experiences. And it does kind of mean that we start again every time. I think for, um, at the beginning of issue one, we wanted, we, well, after issue one, we wanted more structure. We thought, uh, uh, we thought we wanted to create a flanner look and a real series and a real framework. But we soon realized that when you're working on site, um, always with sort of mostly local contributors, that means like 90% of our contributors are people we've never worked with before. And but in turn, it means that um, it's kind of developed its own unique voice uh, that's really specific to the people um, and the place that made it happen. And, uh, and it's very fun to do. Thank you very much.